Well, guys, it's early morning. Uh, Thursday morning. We're get the one cat done, the one I just did the clutch and rear seal on, and uh, yesterday I spent all day doing that sprocket. Uh, so here's the story. So I don't think it was last winter. It was winter before last. Yeah, it was winter before last, I'm pretty certain. But um, anyway, these guys have got, I don't know if they've got six or seven of these. Uh, these are fumigation cats. And, and what they do, the, the toolbar and the implements not on the back of the machine, they took those off so I could work on them because I've got to do undercarriage work. But basically what they do is these fumigate and it's a requirement to fumigate to have a certified strawberry plant. It, it has to be done, that's, that's the rules. Uh, I know people are gonna, oh, you're poisoning the soil and all that well i don't know what to tell you that's that's the requirement it has to be done you're not going to get it you're not going to sell a certified strawberry plant unless you fumigate the field that's the way it is anyway so um this puts methyl bromide and hydrous into the soil to fumigate and sterilize the soil because even i know i don't think this outfit did it but a I remember years ago, TriCal, they're a really big fumigation outfit. They went all the way up into Idaho for the FDA because Idaho was having a huge nematoid problem up there. And I know these guys from California, they went up into Idaho for the FDA, did a bunch of fumigation up there. But anyways, I'm getting off track here. I'm just trying to explain to you what the machine is for and what we're doing here. So, um when they had those dozers i did three of these up here and and if you remember i did pads the whole nine yards uh i i bought the the pads the rails well a lot of you guys call them track chain we call them rails here but track chain pads sprockets and any rollers that were bad i changed those while i was there well the other three dozers were done down south and it looks like to me one of them they didn't even do the undercarriage on which i've got it in the shop in there that's the one with the engine that we're uh in framing which that part's supposed to be showing up tomorrow but whoever did them down there I, what they did as you can tell by looking at that sprocket right there on the other cat it was the left rear one this one is the right rear one what they did the sprockets aren't incorrect but what the problem is they went and stuck a used sprocket on new track chain it's almost like they went and found the best good used one they had and cut it up or something and shoved it on there i don't know it's really strange because these are well i'll just show you right quick i'm just letting this thing charge so i can get it started but see see the rust on here and how I mean in the wear just that's the key thing is the wear I mean that is not and then you come over here and look at this one see the fresh paint and how much thicker this is here and track. anyway um, so what we're going to do is we'll get the sheet metal off, get the track frame out from under it. We're going to leave the sprocket on the, on the dead axle there or whatever. And then we're going to just air arc these welds off and get this sprocket off there. And we'll get this thing trued up and then weld the new one on. So I'll let it charge for a little while longer here. Well, let's see if we can get this thing. Fired up. Guess I should probably check the oil on it now. Everything's froze up. Uh, and no, we're not rebuilding every engine on every damn cat. There's no need to do that. There's nothing wrong with the other cat engines. You fix what's wrong with it, you don't just rebuild the whole damn machine. You know, people, you know, I don't know, people seem to think that people just have endless amounts of money that they can just, just, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let me... Go ahead. 
See what happens here, huh? Okay. I'm gonna go plug it. It's, the go plugs are working because the ammeter am meter went backwards. Shut it off because this is the one that needs the clutch, definitely. Okay, let's try this again. was disengaged but the main box was in gear so it took off moving on me so we got to fix that no good That's why it's kind of nice to do these outside if you can. Less shit you got to clean up in the shop. These are always, no matter how good they clean them before they bring them in, there's always a bunch of dirt trapped underneath the, the guards and everything on them. Okay, so let's get uh, this off back here. Oh, it's about 20 degrees this morning. I'm just kind of hoping that sun would come over the building there and warm me up a little bit. Oh, this has got 5 8 bolts on the bottom, huh? Can't even get a socket on those. Uh, okay, that's a little different than the last one I did. If you're gonna be dumb, you gotta be tough. I keep thinking about that song. <laughs> it suits me well, huh? Dig it out of this Leatherman here, huh? Damn things sure are handy. Thank you. 
they sure daubed the weld on that thing when they when they did do it. Look at the boy, the big gob of weld on there. And that's where the air arc comes in really nice. You can just kind of get your amperage set right and just kind of. There's like a. I'm not the 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 big expert at at air arc, and I never claim to be, but I've run one long enough. And I've seen people run them long enough that do know what they're doing. That I, guys around here, they think they got to have their welder turned all the way up to any time the air arc. I had a call the other day by a guy. Hey, can you come out here? Our welder won't go high enough to run this air arc. And I said, Well, what are you running it on? He goes, Well, we got a Bobcat 250. And I said, Well, what are you, what are you trying to do? Well, we're just cleaning, we're just cutting some welds off. I said, Well, you don't need to run it at full amperage. I said, If you what, what 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 size rod are you running with your air arc? He goes quarter inch. I said, well, you need you you got enough amperage. What do you mean? I said, you, you, if you got a 250, you run around 210, 215, and that's plenty for what you're doing there. Oh, looky here, guys. Here's the proof that they put used sprockets on it. See where they were welded on before? See that? That's what. That's exactly what these clowns did. They put a used sprocket. <laughs> there's the, there's where the old ones were cut off you gotta be i just cannot believe that somebody would go through all the time of putting new tracks on it new track chain and then go and put a cut an old sprocket off an old spoke and weld it onto it unbelievable unbelievable guys unbelievable Thank <laughs> you.
Okay guys, so we got that. So I'll have to get this nut and bolt out of here. Get that off. And then uh gonna get these loose. Clean this dirt out of here so we can get these bolts here loose. Get the holder off. I think I got an o-ring in there for this holder assembly. And then uh yeah, yeah. These broke loose here with the torque multiplier. I couldn't get them loose with the impact. Watch yourself. That son of a bitch can fall out of there and whack you right on the foot and break it again. Bastard's heavy. Stop loose, then we can start. Oh, yeah, I gotta get the trunnion. I gotta get the trunnion bolts out, too. Let's see if we can get this stop loose back here. Sometimes these things can really get hung up in there. One I did yesterday, I had to heat this piece up red hot to get that thing to come out of there. Try to spin the bolt in there first, see if that works. The bolt's spinning inside of it, so that's a good thing. Means maybe it might come out of there. Ah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get a. Yeah, let me go find a different wrench. Let's try that. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, I'll get you, you dirty bastard, either I'll take it heat or torque multiplier. Let's put the wrench on this end and hold it. Let's get the torque multiplier, but I'm going to find, I'm going to have to find an inch and an eighth and a three quarter drive. Just coming out against the end of those threads are all rusted up.
All right, now with the impact, see if we can get her spun the rest of the way up. Ah, suck a bitch, heavy. song out of my head. Jack it up on the front, get this to come over the top, and then jack the. Oh, I gotta get the trunnion bolts loose. I forgot. Let's knock those loose real quick. These guys working on these newer high drives don't realize how good they got it. <laughs> They're way easier to deal with than these are. Doing a track on a high drive is way, way easier. No, we can jack it up. Let's see here. Where am I going to get a hold of the track frame? Usually. Good enough. Okay. I'll have to, I'm gonna leave this on till the last minute, guys. And the whole reason I'm leaving this on because I'm gonna be air arcing this, and I don't want all of this exposed with slag hitting it and everything. So we'll leave this all on till we get to the point where we're and I may not even need it then. I think I can still actually still clear that. Yeah, I don't even think I need to pull that off, to be honest with you. But, well, I got to get one more jack in. I got one set up on the front. Let's get one up under here somewhere.
need to go mess with my amp for a it ain't quite right. But sometimes it's hard on this kind of stuff to get a good steady flow too because I mean I had to grind this down just to work it to the ground. So this isn't making real good contact with this rusty shit. But you can see there where I gouged in here and there's where the separation line is right there where the spoke meets this so that's what we want and I'm cleaning their weld off but I'm not trying to go back too far into this that way I'm kind of got a bevel here see what I'm see what I'm saying but you kind of get the gist of it and we'll have to do it on both sides and go clear around it and get it car cut out of there okay I finally got her dialed in to where she's you know I am by no means the gouging expert, but I've done enough of it to where I can get it cleaned up pretty good, so that's kind of what you want. Uh, he's got such a massive, big, wide weld on there, but sometimes I don't know whether it's better to weave or just make straight passes, but anyway, whatever, whatever works. back and put this in neutral clutch is released it should this reduce this is going to put the Ford reverse neutral into neutral as well I hate climbing on and off of these damn D4s wouldn't be bad if it was a regular dozer but man, these are pain in the ass Ugh. Okay, so let's take it, take the bar, see if we can get it around to the next one. What I do is go right up in here. One I'm on. That's perfect right there. Okay guys, well, we took the torch and we had to just trim just a little bit on each one. I measured them too off. I got them roughly, this one here took a little bit too much off, but we can fill that one in. Uh, but they're all roughly measuring from, you know, from this point here to the end of the spoke. Almost the same except for this one. Uh, but she's ready now i'm going to pull it back off then we're going to take the torch and then make the bevel with the torch at 45 on each side and then clean them up with the grinder and then get it set back on there and get it squared up and tack it in place and start welding it on there well we got her tacked in place we're going to start going around it here i'm running 7018 low hydrogen rod there uh running right around 100 amps so Eighth inch. Turn it up a little bit. 110 amps. A little 110. 
10 amps. That's what it was set at yesterday, but I thought I'd try 100 today. And
two done. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is there nine? One, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that's odd. Hang on a second. Okay, we've got to make sure the cap, the bearing, is in the trunnion end. I went too damn far. I gotta forgot that the jack stand was there. Jack must have leaked down on me a little bit. Okay. Yeah, my front jack must have leaked down a little bit. It leaked down quite a bit, didn't it? Jesus, like a snut. Been doing much anything. Oh, oh come on, camera. This base on this camera is not big enough to hold it up most of the time. Okay. I don't remember what I did now. I let it down on the jack stand. That's what I did. Okay. Now, another lesson that I've learned in doing these. The bearing fell out on this one trunnion cap. And there's a cap laying on the ground. And if you can get that trunnion cap in there right now, and you got to pay attention on these trunnion cap bearings. See the offset here? You got to make sure the offset's the other direction on the cap. And it's got an index hole in it. And a pin here. So, if we're going to go like that, we want the long end that way because the short end's that way. Let's stick it over here on the... like so and now we'll roll it underneath here see if we can get her Ugh. I 
got it most of the way. I'm going to start the cat. I got the back jacked up just enough to where the sprocket shouldn't catch the track chain. That way it doesn't spit the bottom out and it's on the top. So I'm just going to go real easy and see if I can pull it the rest of the way back with the sprocket. And then put the old alligators together. Hopefully. Oh, ow. Something just, oh yes. Forgot about that. That didn't feel really good, but let me get this undone. It's already not going to want to start. Let's go plug it. guys well damn camera battery battery on my camera died there but anyway we got everything back together on this side um tomorrow i gotta get it in there and we'll get the uh get the clutch out of it because it's out of adjustment it won't adjust anymore so we might as well do a rear seal while we're there so but i want to get it apart and see what all is going on there and make sure we're not going to need anything else before i order the stuff but Anyways, guys, so thanks for watching, and hey, guys, make sure that you're subscribed. YouTube's really screwing with me. I've had hundreds of comments of people saying they were unsubscribed. I've had numerous people tell me that every time they go back to watch a video, they have to resubscribe. So they're really, yeah, they, they got her out for me. So anyways, thanks for watching.